Genesis chapter 12. It's a very, very, very familiar passage of scripture. And I hope this morning um, that, that I'll be able to give you something to, to think about. Give you something to help you grow your faith. Yeah. Amen. Genesis chapter 12. It should be easy to find. It's the first book in the Bible. Amen. <laughs> you need help finding Genesis. <laughs> Genesis chapter 12. And I believe this is a, a, a very befitting passage of scripture for what God is doing. Yeah. Um, not just for us who, um, who attend this church, but for others who um, are walking with God and in their walk with God. One of my favorite passages of scripture, it teaches us so many things about God that we may not pay attention to. And hopefully this morning I'm able to lift those things about God, about what he requires or what he asks yeah. from us uh, in such a way that it would encourage and direct our faith. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 9. I'm going to begin at verse number 1. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Now the Lord said to Abram, he's not Abraham yet, get out of your country. Get away from your family and leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. Uh -huh. I will bless you and make your name great. Not your title, but I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Notice, he can't be a blessing until he is blessed himself. Yeah. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse yeah. you. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I want you to consider that that Abram, Abram is going to be blessed so that all of the families of the earth shall be blessed in him. Yeah. That's a big blessing for one man. Amen. And sometimes God will give you something that's too big for you. It's intended for you to share it. Amen. So Abram this is one of the passages of scripture, right? Here. Abram on, departed sir. as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old mm. when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, which is his nephew, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. Yeah. So they came to the land of Canaan. They didn't stop there. Abram passed through the yeah. land of the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Morah. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him there. Uh -huh. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. Yeah. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. south. Can you say uh -huh. amen? amen? You know, one of the things I want to point out is that God told him that he was going to give his descendants that land. But Abraham continued to, <laughs> to yeah. journey. And man, this one I want to talk to you about. God is calling you out. Come on. God is calling you out. I want you to repeat that after me. Say, God is calling me, is calling me. out. out. <laughs> amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm about to uh, go to God. In prayer, God, I thank you, God, for this opportunity. I thank you, God, for this opportunity. I need just as much grace and mercy as I did last week and the week before that. God, I need you. I would never be worthy uh, of the place that you have called me into. 
But I pray, oh God, that you would help me this morning, God, that you would help me this morning, that you would overshadow my shortcomings, God, that you would strengthen my body, oh God, and even through my tiredness, strengthen, strengthen my mind, God, that I would be able to speak a word with clarity, lift my mind, God, to a place where I can hear what your spirit is saying, that I would only speak those things that you would have me to speak. I need your help this morning, oh God. I pray, God, for your people, for those who are here, for those who are watching, God, open up their ears that they would hear your word, oh God. Open up their minds that they would understand your word. Open up their eyes, God, uh, figuratively, God, that they would get the right perspective. Yes. And then open up their hearts that they would receive this word. I pray, God, that you would speak it with such clarity and help me, God, to articulate it in such a way that it would be life to their spirits, oh God. Yes. Help me this morning, God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is calling you out. I like that. <laughs> God is calling you out. Amen. Amen. God is calling you out. One of the things that um, I'm going to be pointing out some things here um, this morning. One of the things that that uh, you will learn about God um, um, as, as you walk with God, and this is what it's really about, this is what church is really all about, is learning to walk with God. We know that the Bible says that we must be born yeah. into God's family, born into God's lifestyle. And anything, the time that you, from the time that you are born, what happens is, is that you begin to learn. Yeah. That's all you do. What babies do is they learn. They learn to talk. They learn to use their hands. They learn to walk. They learn to use right. their feet. Yeah. They learn, they examine every part of their body. I notice with babies, babies, they be looking at their hands like they fascinated. Yes, you have hands. Yeah, yeah. And the thing of it is, is that when you come into the family of God, when you come into the life of God, you start off as a baby. Yeah. And the thing about God is, is that God is always pushing you to grow. And yeah, I want us to yeah. understand that, that, that the God that you serve is always pushing you to grow as you walk with him. Yeah. And so and so you come in, you are born in, but everything is new to you as a Christian. Everything is new to you. To walk spiritually, you don't immediately just start walking spiritually when you are born into the lifestyle of Christianity or the yeah. lifestyle of God and the ways of God. You have to come in and learn. And so because of that, God is always pushing you to grow. I want us to hear that, that God is always Pushing you to grow. And sometimes it's difficult because it's comfortable to stay where you have been. Yeah. It's comfortable to continue doing the things that you have been doing. It's easy and it feels normal to continue in the same ways. But I want you to understand that God is always pushing you to grow. And I want you to get that sometimes God is going to move you. Sometimes physically. But most of the time what God wants to do is he wants to move you spiritually, that God wants to move you mentally, that God wants to move you emotionally. And so as you go yeah. about your life, after you are born into the family of God, the spiritual life, that you are going to have experiences in your life um, and God will use those experiences sometimes to move you physically, but more so to move you mentally and to move emotionally and to move you spiritually. Sometimes God shifts some things around in your life only not to move you physically but to move you spiritually, to move you mentally, to move you emotionally. And I want us to understand that, that God is always pushing you to grow and because of that God sometimes shifts some things in your life. And it's not because he's trying to shift the thing itself. It's because he's trying to shift your mind somewhere else. And things happen in your life and you have experiences in your life. And it's not because God is trying to get you to focus on so much physically, but maybe God is trying to shift you emotionally. And sometimes God shifts some things in your life. But there are other times that God will show you that it's time to move. It's, he'll show you that it's time to move. And this is where I want you to get it this morning. That he'll start giving you signs that it's time for you to step out of one phase of your life and into the next phase. There are times that God does shift some things in your life. But there are times that God will start to show you um, that this mindset may not be working for this phase 
to love your life. And I want you to get it that. Yeah. And that you may be experiencing God giving you signs, giving you hints, oh, giving you clues that it's time for you to step out of what you've been doing. Maybe it's clues that God is telling you it's time for you to step out of the way that you've been yeah. thinking, uh, step out of the bitterness that you hold on the inside. Maybe God is giving you hints. Maybe God is giving you clues. Maybe God is giving you a sign yeah. that it's time for you to step out. Sometimes he shifts some things in your life, but sometimes he'll show you that it's time to step out. And when he gives you the hint, I need you to hear me this morning that that's God calling you to hit in your life. That's God's way oh. of calling you to sign in your life. That's God's way uh, of calling you. That, that, that little thing that, that, that used to feel right, but don't feel as right as it used to. Maybe that's God, come on, calling you out of what you have been in for so long. And sometimes it's unexpected. Sometimes God will give you hints and clues that it's time to move from one thing to the next thing. And yeah, he yeah. calls you out of your normal. I know some of you in here, some of you that may be watching, you have made dysfunction your normal. You you have made manipulation your normal yeah. and God is calling you out of your normal. You have made anger your normal and God is calling you out of your normal. You have made things that are not right for you normal and yeah. God is calling you out of your normal. You have made unproductive habits your normal and this morning God sent me to tell you that he's calling you out of the dysfunctional unproductive habits and lifestyles in your life. That God is calling you out of your place of comfort. I want you to hear me this morning that God will call you out of your comfortable and predictable and he'll put you in a place where he'll start nudging you. I want to minister to somebody that God has been nudging you. That God has been elbowing you in the side saying something ain't right where you are uh, you might need to change I want to minister to somebody who may not understand that God has been trying to get you to move from where you are uh, to your next phase and, and somebody needs to hear me this morning that you've been where you've been too long but it's time for a change and God is calling you out of where where you are to come out of where you are and he'll God will do it he'll start to nudge you where uh, uh, he'll start to nudge you he'll start to bump you a little bit where you start thinking different about some habits that you've been doing that you start to feel different about some things that you've been doing about some ways that you've been having that and sometimes God will nudge you he won't force you but but he'll gently tell you give you some signs and hints and clues and maybe uh, it's time to switch up a little bit and this is the occasion of the text that God uh, the story this morning that God has called Abraham Abraham, Abram, he's not Abraham yet, out of everything that he knows as normal. He calls him out yeah, of yeah. his father's house. And I don't. I want you to get that significantly, that, that God does not force Abraham. Abram. He calls him. He, he calls him, and the first call is out of and away from. Abram is called to leave everything familiar. Yeah, yeah. Get this, that he's 75, that means he has cousins that he and that he used to hang out with and that he still is, I need you to hear me this morning, that he still hangs out with. He got friends in the area, right, that maybe know that's not even kin to him, but but he know him because he's been there so long that his mom is there and, and his dad is there and their way of life is there and everything he knows about life is there. I want you to hear me. He know where to go to the grocery store because he's been living for so long. He know where to get his medicine at. I need you to hear me because he's been there for so long and all of a sudden God, he calls him out of and away from, out of everything that you know to be familiar. Out of every habit, out of every lifestyle, out of everything that he knew to be what it was and he's called to leave everything 
everything familiar. And, and I believe figuratively we can see the story, yeah, yeah. but figuratively we can see ourselves that sometimes God will call you out of the old yes, lifestyle. And my question for you this morning is, what is God calling you out of and away from? What is God calling you out of and away from? And I need you to hear me when I say this this morning, yeah. that there are some things that you are going to have to leave behind. I need somebody to get it this morning. That there are some yeah. people that you are going to have to leave behind. There are some habits that you're going to have to leave behind. There are some ways that you go going to have to leave yeah. behind. I need you to hear me this morning that there are some things that you are going to have to leave uh, behind. And I ain't talking physically. I'm talking about figuratively. Maybe it's the unforgiveness in your heart. You got to come on, be willing uh, to leave it behind. There are some things that you call familiar that you are going to have to leave behind. Your new is not going to be like your old. So you got to stop looking for old signs to lead you uh, into new. He says, I want you to leave everything that you know to be yes. normal. Abram, I want you to get out. Whatever lifestyle that you had, I need you to walk away from it. That, that we build up things in our lives that has no business being in our lives. And God, he calls you. Uh, come on, he calls you out of it. And that's the difficulty of it is, is that Abram is 75 years old. That means he just get here. It'd be yeah, different yeah. if he called him out when he was 20. He, he hadn't been doing it that long, but it, he's 75 woo, years old. And my question to you is, uh, how do you know that God at this age and stage of your life is not calling you out of something that you've been doing? And that he allowed you a grace period of, of doing some things and carrying on some ways and talking a certain way and acting a certain way and behaving but for 75 years I let you be there but now I'm calling you out and uh, let me mark and when I was a child I spoke as a child I, I thought as a child and I, I understood as a child but uh, but when I became a man I need somebody to hear me that God is calling you out of that immature behavior God is calling you out of those uh, conversations he's calling you out of those ways of life and practices and he's calling you boy into a man. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. He's calling you girl into womanhood and it's time for you uh, to come out of what you have been in for so long. I, I need you to hear me this morning if you've been praying to God and God sent me to tell you he's calling you uh, out of and uh, away from. He's calling you out. This is the, the difficulty of new. The difficulty uh, of new. The difficulty of new is everybody won't new, but you don't recognize that you can't bring old into, I need somebody to get it. That you won't new, I know you won't new, but you want the new to meet you where you are. But in order to get there, you got to leave here. I need you to get it. Somebody needs to understand that if you want to see something new, you got to be willing to leave what is old. And I need somebody to get it this morning that God That you ready for something new is that you kill uh, what is old in your life. The sign that God is waiting on uh, to see whether you're ready for your new is are you willing to let go of what is old? The way that God is said, you're going to show God that you're ready for new is if you're willing to kill and destroy and crucify what is old. I need somebody to hear me this morning. You need to go ahead and close Hey. 
page. You got to turn the page. There's, there's too much down in you that God is trying to get out of it, but you got to be willing to, uh, to walk away uh, from it. It's time to kill the old. Walking in new, uh, you got to be willing to, to walk away from what is old. And I like that. I like that because we have so many habits. We have so many things, so many ways that, that we want to keep. But God says, I need you to come out of and away from. I want you to come out of and away from. He calls Abram out of where he is so that Abram could go to a place that is unknown. But but God knew, but Abram did not know. Have you noticed that that sometimes when we read about God in the Bible that he's not like what people make him seem like. Some people make God seem like God tells them every little, little bitty detail that I woke up and the Holy Ghost told me to brush my teeth on the left and then brush the top and bottom. That the Holy Ghost told me to roll over three times in my bed and I would get a blessing. But he does not give Abram any details. He he just says go. He just uh, Abram, I need you to go. And 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 when you go, I need somebody to get it. I just need you to get up. And and sometimes I believe that God does us the same way that He's not gonna give you every detail because He yeah. wanna see if you're really ready to. I need you to get it. If you're really ready to get up from where you are uh, in hope and faith, of what God? Yeah, He says, Abram, I just need you to get up. I, Place. Oh God, I feel that too tough. 
that I, come on, we'll show you. I'm going to show you where you belong. I can't tell you now, but I just need you to get out of it. And when you get there, I'll show you. I need somebody to hear me. Don't let the fear of uncertainty stop you from making a change for the better in your life. He says, go to a land that I will show you. I want you to hear me that God is going to show you. I don't know who needs to hear that, but God is going to show you. You may not know when it's time to go, but and when you get there, God will show you. You got to learn to trust in him. You got to learn to trust in him. God will show you. You don't have to know all the details. You just need to trust God and move forward. And when you get there, trust that God will show you. Somebody needs to hear that this morning, that God is going to show you where you belong. God is going to show you who you need to be with. That God is going to show you the place where you need to stay. God is going to show you the people that you need to have up in your life. But if you know that something is not right where you are, you got to trust God enough. Come on, to step on out. I don't know where I'm going, but I know I can't stay here. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know I'm not going to stay where I have been because where I am is not what's up. I got to I got to move on. God is calling you out. He's calling you out. I got to, uh, somebody needs to hear that. You just got to decide you're going to get up and move. Not, not because you know all of the answers, but because you trust God. Not because you can see all the way down to the end, but because you trust God and, and you trust that when you get to your place of blessing that God is going to show you. He's making me to lie down yeah. in the green pasture. Sometimes God has to show you where to lay. He said, I will, when you get there, Abram, I will show you that God will show you wow, you making progress. God will show you when. God will show you when it's time. God will show you where you belong. God will show you how it's going to come together. Once you start moving, God will show you. Once you start moving, God will show you who. Once you start moving, God will show you where. When you start moving, God will show you when. Only God has all the details, but you got to be willing uh, to come out. Uh, but yeah, he says, I need you to come out, Abram. I need you to come out. He says to a land that I will yeah. show you, come out to a land that I will show you. And I want you to hear this morning that if you're going to reach your place of blessing, you got to be willing to move forward. Somebody needs to hear that, that the mindset that you have, on, you got to get it here. Hear me, hear me, hear me that I said reach your place of blessing, not receive your blessing, but I said reach your place of blessing. We got to yeah. stop thinking as blessings as things and start seeing blessings as a place. Get your mind off of things and get your mind to a place. I need you to get it. Uh, get your mind off of things and get your mind to a place. Get your mind to a place. And, and I need us to understand uh, that God, most of the time when he's speaking of blessings, he's not talking about a thing, but he's talking about a place. You got to get your emotions off of a thing and get your emotions to a place. Let this mind be in you that is also in, come on, Christ Jesus. And I want you to hear me that your mind can't be on stuff, but you got to get your mind to the place. Well, well come on then. Uh, the peace that passes all the understanding is not a thing, but it's a it's a place. It's a it's a mindset that and in your emotions you are unraveled. It's not set on a specific thing, but but your emotions become at a. Uh, I need somebody to get it at a place. He says, I need you to get it that you will not reach your place of blessing. It's not a place. I mean, it's not a thing, but it's a place that God would give you the possession when you get in a position and maybe that's what's stopping your blessing. Maybe your mind has not got in the right place that, that God can't bless you. Maybe your emotions have not got in the right place. Why God can't send you your boo thing. Maybe I need somebody to get it. Your spirit has not got to the right place. I need you to get it that God will give you the possession when you get yourself in the that you gotta find the place that God uh, will have you.
to be. And this is the, uh, the difficulty of living a blessed life. Everybody wants the blessing of success, but nobody is willing to make the necessary changes. And, and before I leave this morning, before I leave you this morning, because I'm watching the time, uh, everybody wants the blessing, but nobody is willing to make the sacrifice and make the changes. That, that you got to change some things about you That's before it. God can bless you with what it is that you expected him to bless with that, that he's come into your life to transform you and, and here's what I like about Abraham did you notice when, you, when we read the story that when uh-huh. you read the story of Moses and God calls Moses yeah, yeah. Moses says I, God I'm not the right guy he calls Jeremiah and then Jeremiah calls you to uproot and tear yeah. down Jeremiah says I, God maybe not me he calls Isaiah the eagle eye prophet uh, in the Old Testament and Isaiah said ah Lord I cannot I cannot but when we read about the story of Abram it just says the, that Abram did what the Lord had commanded that bless me because Abram didn't have a conversation with God like we do. That that sometimes when God asks me to do something I got to double check with him to make sure that it's him. But but most of the time we spend time making excuses as to why we can't do what God has already come on. We make excuses and we give reasons as to why we can't do what God said do. But, But I like the response of Abram that the response of Abram is he packed up all his stuff and he just moved yes, on yes. what God has said. He, I don't need to know the when. I don't need to know the how. I don't need to know the where, God. But once I hear your voice, he just moved on what God said. And I want you to get it. If you want better in your life, you have to come to the place where your faith gets bigger than your fears. That your faith yeah. has to get bigger than your fears. That God yeah. has not given you the spirit of fear that that you have got to learn how to silence your fears. I'm not saying that you won't be scared. I'm not saying that you won't be nervous. But you got to overstep that fear and step over into into faith. I was reading the story that the story of the lepers who were sitting outside of the city. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. But but the enemies are coming. And if we go into the city, we're going to die. So either way, you're going to die. But if we just get up, let us get up and come on, go into the countryside. And I want you to hear me when I say this, that, that where you may be in your life, you're going to die. And if you sit there around waiting, you're going to die. You might as well trust God enough to. Uh, to take a step uh, of faith in the, the right direction that he says, I'm just going to get up and I'm just going to go. I need somebody to get that. The journey does not come with instructions, but God is calling yeah. you out. That God is calling you out. But you have to decide that you want it for yourself. That you got to decide that you want greater for your own life. That you got to decide that you want to be a better person you step out because I, I found somebody uh, I found out that, that as long as you okay with being depressed that God will leave you depressed as long as you okay with being sad that God will leave you sad as long as you okay with being unhappy God will leave you being unhappy that as long as you okay with being uh, beat down by life that God will leave you beat down but it's not until you decide that you want to make a change that God is waiting uh, for you to get up that's what God 